Hi guys, welcome back on my channel, Dora Kapalitska International New Artist and Educator here and today I'm in with Brittany again. I will, I will show you, obviously I have prepped some nails already and I will just show you on those two how I'm applying the tips, so shortening a free edge. Brittany has a pretty uh, short nail beds, um, so we kind of go a little bit over the length we should, but she's really good at keeping her nails so they will last her. I'm just scratching the free edge and then dehydrate it with the blue scrap extra nail dehydrator and then we are going to apply the tips so when i'm applying the tips i'm always cutting the pocket a little bit just the corners of the uh, of the tip Actually, her nails, um, she doesn't have exposed nail folds like the tiny, so it's not a big deal. But when we got the client which has the uh, very high nail folds, uh, then if we don't cut those corners, it's more difficult to blend them with the natural nail. So I, I really like to do that. And then I'm just doing the same with the next one. So cut the corner, cut the corner. And then apply the tips. Okay, after I apply the tips, uh, I let them set, and my next step is to uh, push back the cuticles. You can start from this step as well, but I usually tend to just quickly file the free edge and then move on into the cuticle work once I've got the tips and the reason for it is with the cuticle bead we can really nicely reach the places which are sometimes very difficult to reach with the nail file so I've got my cuticle bead and now I'm just going to do it one side I'm only cleaning any cuticle from the nail plate okay and as I say she's got no nail folds uh, so very easy um, because of this reason but sometimes we get it clients with the high folds and then this is so useful like uh, doing those uh, corners of the tips with your uh, e-file now I put my e-file to the reverse and just doing the other side cut the length we want and now we are going to sh uh, blend those tips so one side other side one side other side free edge nice and straight and then couple scratches all over For such a short nail bed, I'm pretty impressed how the finished nails looks on Brittany. Because uh, obviously, depending on what we've got to work with, like we can get a different results. But her nails, like they don't look impressive before you start working on them, but the finished results are always pretty, uh, pretty good. And then I take the next one couple scratches all over and I'm always start doing a scratches first all over and then blending the difference uh, 
just because we weakened the tip uh, when we file it so this way I can kind of do my work without of worrying that the tip is too weak to be fast okay final check so I'm always taking a file and I'm checking if there is any other shiny places before we start putting the gel okay so just check 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 So first just just like quick quick and then a really precise touch up remove any dust which might be on the nails and then using a nail dehydrator we clean the nail again just in case if we have touched it uh, I just like to give it an extra scrub especially around the cuticle area because that's where is the most common place to lift then an extra nail prep Again, only at the cuticle area. And then Universal Airbond. Universal Airbond gives us a really nice adhesion to the natural nails. You don't apply it too much, like make sure the Universal Airbond doesn't get on the tip. It's only applied on top of the natural nail. Same on next one. And now we can apply the product on the snail. So I'm going to use the light rose fiber gel. And I'm always, I love like this place because uh, uh, then I can secure the pot so it's not moving. I don't like when the things are moving. And first of all, I'm starting with a nice and thin layer. Like capping the free edge, making sure everywhere I've got uh, the product. You can press it pretty decent. And then I've got another one. So we'll just do it exactly the same. One side, press it pretty decent. And the next side. Hi. And then on this one. Cap those free edge, and then we are doing a next new. What are we doing today? Um, should I put them, if that's okay? Yes, of course. And then once you're happy with those first layer, you can put the hand inside. Something like that. Okay? Then the next one. Mm -hmm. okay. And first of all, you've got so much control over so little product that this is very easy to apply it, and you can go really close to the cuticle. Um, you can really cut those free edges and um, and you can make sure you've got the product on the right places. So I really love working with those thin layer. And then I show you the apex placement for a Britannia's nails. So we need to really watch it. You don't put it too, um, too far down. If we do put it too far down, the nails will become really heavy and that could cause the lifting. So all the apex has to be on the area where she got her own nail beds. So like on my nails, apex would start here and it will run even up to there. On her nails, I cannot go as far, like I don't want to make them too heavy. Change. So the first nice and thin layer is cured. So we are going to apply a second thin layer. Nice and thin. Nice and thin. Okay, and that will be enough product around the cuticle area and the sides. Now I'm picking up a scoop of the product for my apex and I want all my apex to be at her nail bed and then going thinner and thinner so it's not too heavy. Okay. Clean my brush and then you can spread the gel a little bit to the sides. Change. Same on this one. It doesn't get hot. No. If uh, your clients, uh, I think everyone is different. So if your clients feel it a bit warm, I usually advise to put the hand in and then take it out. So kind of playing with the nails. 
Okay, spread the product a little bit. Change. And then pick up another scoop. So one side, other side, till you reach the free edge. And as you can see, it I don't go too much to the sides. I just leave them on the ends because I don't want my, my product to run their change. And depending on the temperatures, we might do it one or two nails, or we might do it five. So it's really all individual, depending on the temperatures of the room you're working with, the temperatures of the client hands. Um, so you kind of, kind of, it's best to adjust it yourself. I also check that I'm also wobbling like my hand, the left hand, which is holding a client nail. I'm not only working with my brush, but change, but I'm also working with the client hand as well. And that helps me uh, quite, quite a lot. Okay, another scoop. And then just relax it. <laughs> Thanks. And when the hand is relaxed, I can play it a little bit more. So that's why it's important. And obviously it doesn't put a strain into my, my wrist and arm which is really important. So you can see it, guys, I've got lots of products on my Apex and then the free edge is really nice and thin. Especially as we still have to put two colors of the gel polish, change, uh, the gel polish and then the top coat over it. So that's an extra two coats. So you don't want to make them overly too thick. It just doesn't look nice and it doesn't really help as much like I mean of course if the nails are really flat they would um, easily snap but like if if you've got the apex and um, the right amount of the product they don't need to be like a huge and thick especially at the free edge Like I kind of prefer this structure because if the client bang it, uh, they will break it more at the free edge rather than at the place where they've got their nail bed. Change. And with Brittany, if she doesn't, I, I think you don't break many. It did happen once when you yeah. was for a walk with yeah. the dog, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> like that was, that was when fun. I had a disaster, but normally she's pretty. It's normally like one or two. Yeah, pretty good with her nails. That's why I'm not scared to apply this lens. Um, ideally, you sh we shouldn't be doing uh, extensions which are longer than 100% of the nail bed. So here I've got almost 200, 200% uh, 200 of the nail bed, which is a lot, um, like a really a lot of the lens for such as short nail beds. Perfect. Uh, not perfect yet. Perfect change. <laughs> and then the wee pinky. So once the product is on them, they don't look as bad. Um, and once they shape, um, as I say, they look for the sh for the shortness of the new, but they look really impressive. And I have tried both on Brifani, the sculpted sets and the tip set. And because her nails are really, really flat uh, and uh, she doesn't have those nail folds, like I, I do really prefer it actually the tip look on her rather than the sculpted set, which is weird because normally it's opposite. I prefer the sculpted to the tips change. So my first hand is cooked and what I'm going to do is a UV cleanser, remove the inhibition layer and then I will show you how I'm shaping maybe one, two nails and then we can move on into the design. So I've got my file and we have to get those coffin shape as well. So a V shape, you can see the scratches there. 
okay the shape you can see the scratches and the shape already looks much better so I also suggest if you want to have the same nails um, I suggest like you do one step and then you move on into the next step that will kind of give you a nice consistency on your work okay and then the next one okay so you can see it with this movement how much the shape has has changed so the next step is to file the free edge okay we want to have a nice free edge nice and straight nice and straight nice and straight I mean in general I do it all this step in a one kneel and then I move on into the second kneel but I just wanted to show you guys because this way you can get your consistency next one I'm bringing everything to the top so I'm removing any bulk which I may have still at the free edge I'm blending everything around the cuticle area okay so blending everything nice around the cuticle area so there is no catchy bits and places and then smoothing the entire free edge quite often it does happen that I almost don't touch my apex uh, there is no point to apply the product and then file it away so I'm kind of doing this motion and I'm checking the hairline like how the nail looks underneath and here that's pretty okay I'm going to rest uh, leave it the rest for the buffer Okay, next one. Honestly, you have to guys try it, those movement. Like, if you don't do it, you have to start doing it because you are working with such a large surface of the file that the nails are so much smoother and even uh, compared to going like maybe one time here, one time there. Uh, this way we kind of quite often tend to make some uneven surface on the nails. Uh, uh, so I'm always checking those hairline and I'm following the hairline to make sure the nails are nice and even. You have to really try it filing this way. That was like the biggest game changer for me um, when it comes to the nail extensions. And you see the thickness, like you can see it if the product is distributed nice and even all through the entire nail. okay and then the next one of course we didn't tidy up our cuticles yet as you guys know like I only remove the cuticles from the nail plate and then before painting I do trim any if it's necessary uh, but I don't like to do too excessive work okay so I will show you that as well Brilliant. Now with the buffer, the buffer is pretty sharp uh, and it does create lots of scratches. So I'm just smoothing out the surface, like pretty fast to start off. Only in the middle. Okay, only in the middle. More through the middle of the nail. So this is just to perfect any imperfections. And then once I have done this part, I can go with the buffer and I can do more work, uh, but now be more gentle uh, because I'm working closer to the cuticle area. Okay, and I don't want to cut my client. I do sometimes, um, I mean, obviously when I'm doing the work and I'm working pretty fast, it looks sometimes rough, uh, but I don't think so. I have like i don't cut my clients uh, i do really protect their folds and i'm only working fast on the parts where i can work fast and at the parts where i have to slow down i'm really slow okay again perfecting the shape and the next one
and same like as I did with the tips when I'm working fast you, you don't see it uh, maybe some stuff so once I finish this step I will check the nails and see if there's any other places which I should touch before I will start applying the gel polish okay so I will clean the nails I will check them this position I will check them this position and yes I can blend more around the critical area So very gently not sore no and this way you kind of push the cuticles as well cool now it's a part to tidy up the cuticle and then we can paint the uh, gel polish I will do the other hand as well so we've got them both ready and then the gel uh, polishing the design so I'm using a knee purse but only remove the very sticking out hang nails like rather than cutting the entire nail fold uh, if you overdo it uh, it's then too overgrown it's kind of like almost causing a scarring tissue as well uh, so it's better to do it gradually for your clients rather than just like you know remove like a big chunk and then make them either bleed or or make a scarring tissue so very little and I'm using two millimeters cuticle nippers they are fantastic they're so tiny they're so precise and um, absolutely amazing perfect okay so this way I would just clean the dust uh, clean them with the blue scrap and this way those nails are ready for a for a color application i'm just going to do the second hand exactly the same and then come back to you guys okay that's them all nice and ready to be painted and we are going to use 183 which is a blank ink i love it because it's a one coat black So nice and close to the cuticles. And then cut the free edge. Now, do we keep this one nude or we paint it black and we do the design? Hi there. Oh gosh. Whatever. <laughs> Okay, maybe let's do it all black and then we paint the design. I've got it right on the end in my bottle, the black ink, because obviously it has been out of stock. So I cannot wait when it's arrived again. Perfect. Next one. Okay, for sure. With this movement, I'm also pushing the cuticles back just before I'm painting. You can also take like a thin brush and perfect this area. It's really depending on, to be honest, how much time you're booking per client and how much you're charging for a set of the nails, uh, I would say. I 
I quite like to give it a extra push just before I paint it. Because then once the nails are cured and once the top coat is applied on it, um, the cuticle kind of moves back and it creates a really nice, nice results. Side. So that one coat is plenty for for this gel polish. I'm actually so happy guys to be back as well because I will be able to show you more of the salon tutorials um, and what else I want to do it is like I want to show you maybe some really problematic nails because being honest like it is really rare to get a clients like with the nails which I have or and, and most of the clients like have either some biting nails or some nails which are pretty wide growing down like and there are so many different issues with those nails and uh, we can do only what we can do on those nails but i think it is pretty interesting uh, subject as well to show you those uh, more problematic nails um, how to deal with them and obviously what is possible to to achieve on those kind of uh, type of the nails And you can see it i'm pushing in and out like to get my product as close as possible to the cuticle And the tiny pinky, the tiniest one ever. <laughs> like making sure the free edge is cut and then I uh, no 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 no. Put this place to touch and this place to touch. <laughs> And this place to touch change <laughs> so that was just a wee wee corners of touching up and as i say if we would be really fussy we would take a small brush and we would just uh, go around the cuticle uh, area with the small brush uh, if you want like a very extremely close cuticle application now i'm just applying the top coat and when the top coat application, I quite like sometimes to improve the shape as well, even more. I like making sure I cut the free edge. And I'm checking under the light, how the light reflects the nail. And if there is any places which I'm not 100% happy with, I can still add a drop more of the top coat into those places. okay do the same on the other hand and then we are going to buff the ring fingers and we are going to paint some design so basically i wanted to do it something i was thinking about something gold 
white and black and kind of designer style nails. I'm actually wearing the uh, black and gold tracksuit today as well. Uh, so I'm totally in a black and gold mood. Um, but Brittany is getting a tattoo and the tattoo is going to be a snake. When are you getting it done? 10th of June. 10th of June. Uh, so, uh, so we are going to do the snake on her nails uh, just so she got something uh, related to the tattoo because <laughs> she's really excited. Is that your first tattoo? No, it's my no. third. Third? Yeah. Oh, okay. I need to get some more as well. I've got only one. I'm thinking of booking in to get five on the same day, but there'd be four little ones. Uh -huh. and the snake one's going to be on my hips, Church? so it's going to be huge. Oh. I'm actually there. curious how all the nails you once you have it done. <laughs> okay, guys, so for this part, we need to we need to give a couple scratches to our nail. Clean it well, and then we are going to use the paint on French gel to grab some pigment and to be able to do a wee tiny wee snake. <laughs> Would you prefer the head up on the top or on the bottom? Either is good. Which you fancy? Um, bottom maybe? Bottom. Okay, sense. so the wee head is... You mean bottom is here? Yeah. Or here? Uh, there. there. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that, you mean a good bottom, okay. Because sometimes people say, oh, at the bottom of there. Okay, that's good. So we are going to paint the wee head. Like, I don't want to make it a too huge, I want just a nice and tiny one. Okay, and now I'm just going to make it a little bit thicker. So painting this way is much easier because you kind of indicate the shape first and then you know where you want to go. Yet. Is it nail extensions, infills, what you're looking for? Okay, then getting close to the head. Mm -hmm. And we've got a cute uh, snake. I actually quite like it in white so as well. I it? like it in white too, yeah. Well, we'll see what we do yeah. about it, yeah? Okay, so... Change your hands and I'm going to cure it uh, 30 okay, seconds so the pigment sticks in nice. So bath another nail. Clean it well. Now do we do it yellow Sorry. and green ombre snake or we do it only green or... I think either um, only so green or um, here, the light and and body extensions okay. are 40. Now, can I see, see the other snake? So now I need to design it at opposite. Okay, so this little head. And this is always the most difficult part. So the head and then, yes. 
So the most difficult part is to copy the, um, the image. Okay, I've got the indication of the design. <laughs> And now I can just make it a thicker. So just green, yeah? Yeah. My goodness, those seagulls, they everywhere, like... I just wonder what they're so excited about at 5 o'clock in the morning. Do you hear them as well, Aga? Yeah. Well, Agnieszka is my neighbor, so we get to wake up so early in the morning yeah. because of those seagulls. <laughs> Mm -hmm. And set. And now some messy pigments. The fun with the pigments. Actually, pigments are going to be really popular, uh, definitely through the summer. So that's a bright color. And for the pigments, I'm just going to use some old brush. Like making sure it's nice and dry, then grabbing the nail and rubbing those pigment in. Is that neon enough? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, then clean it everything properly. It actually looks cool, black and green. So clean the excess of the pigment, then apply the top coat and basically that's the set of the nails finished. Do the same on this one. That's still kind of plain for you. We always go crazy. I know. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, we, we have done it really kind of plain set, but I hope guys you have really enjoyed this tutorial as well. Uh, like more about the structure of the nails. Okay, if something like this happen, see, I done it for a reason, otherwise the video would be too boring. So, if something like this happen, what you have to do it, there is a tiny bit uh, where I have missed it. What you have to do it is take up, take a ti the tiniest amount of the uh, top coat ever, and mix it with the pigment, and just touch up those places. And ta-da! Change your hands for a second. Swap them again flash cure it like a couple seconds and then reapply the top coat and you've got a fix it pigment design so in case if something like this happened to you you just use a drop of the top coat with the pigment great now i just clean them and i show you the final results and take a nice thumbnail picture 
By the way, thank you so much, guys. We have reached those 50,000 uh, subscribers. I'm so, so happy. Uh, yeah, thank you so much for all your likes, shares, comments, and all the support you are giving to this channel. I really, really appreciate it. Cheers. So this hunt is uh, cooked and ready. I'm going to wait two, three seconds before I start uh, touching it because uh, that will make your top coat dull. If you touch the nails too soon, uh, they, they go kind of dull. So I'm always waiting a couple seconds before I start cleaning my client uh, hands. And then same with the cuticle application. If you apply it too soon, they might go dull as well. So I'm just cleaning all those dry bits and pieces. And then once I've got the final look, what else I do it, and it's pretty common I do it, is I might check it and might maybe touch it there. Touch it there. I kind of do a really final, final check on those nails and then apply the cuticle uh, oil. So always give it those couple seconds uh, before you are touching your, uh, your top coat. And then apply the cuticle oil. Do not apply it on the, on the nails, obviously. Uh, you only want to apply it on the cuticles because if you've got the uh, nails folded with the cuticle, it just even doesn't doesn't look nice as well. Uh, so the other hand is ready as well. Uh, yeah, I, I hope guys you have really enjoyed watching this tutorial. So sending you glittery hacks and bye for now.